Hello everyone. Thank you for stopping by. This is Sandy from Color Creatively and I am going to do a picture in Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosanis. And this is the picture that I would like to do. Um, been wanting to do it for a while and haven't taken the time. So I think we're going to launch off into this. This is just a computer paper that I've used. I'm going to put it behind here because I'm going to paint the sky with acrylics. Uh, I'm going to use different mediums on this picture as I go. And um, I can't tell you right now what they are because I'll decide as I go. But first of all, um, I wanted to paint this sky. I want to do it first and get it in. And I decided I've been going around and around about different colors. And um, I think what I'm going to do is just traditional. I'm using Blue Cotton by Apple Barrel. It's a matte acrylic paint. And I have it in this little dish here off to the side. I will be um, diluting it with a little bit of Floating Medium by Folk Art. It makes your paint easier to flow and it keeps it from drying out as quickly. Now, acrylic will dry out quickly. I put one tiny dot in there. It's a gel, so you don't need much. And I have a video on this. I'll try to link it in one of the end cards or in videos or something. Uh, look for it. It'll be linked somewhere or in the description. Um, I will try to find that too and link it for you for those that need more instruction in acrylic painting for backgrounds. Let me get another book and put under this because I found that when you're at the end of the books, you keep you press on it and you'll break the bindings and that's why my books have been falling apart so now i put another book under it and that way it's uh, level and stable okay let me move everything my desk is very small and i will have to be reaching um, over to the edge to get my paint on my brush so and i'm going to First of all, dip my oh, I mixed it up already. Okay, great. I'm going to just paint the larger areas first. And then I will go back and paint around all these plants. Um, So I don't want to bore you. I'm going to paint here a little bit, and then I'm going to uh, sign off or put you on pause, I should say. Put you on pause, and then I will finish this background and come back for the next step. So that's how we're going to do this video. And I move it. I don't want to get the paint on the other side. <clears throat> I fill in the largest areas first that I can. And don't have your paint thick like that because if that dries, it's going to leave lumps. Let me see the light in here. I have to turn it so that I can see that I'm not leaving a lump and I've spread it out. Let me get my smaller brush. <clears throat> And I'll come in closer. I'm sorry I didn't zoom in yet. Let me fin let me just spread this out before it dries because then I have a lump in my background and it won't be smooth. And I use little brushes, little detail brushes to go around these smaller items. Okay, let's zoom in i'm sorry i keep forgetting that i just get on here and start talking <clears throat> okay i'm gonna leave it like that for the background and um i i take these small brushes i'll list all my supplies below 
in case you're interested in any of them. I'm using regular craft, inexpensive craft brush sets. But <clears throat> these are a special for detailing, these, um, this black set here. And I'll list it because I like to go around some of the smaller objects and, and some of my pictures. Um, you know, there's a lot of detail. Like, um, so I'll go around him here carefully. It does take time. But if you figure out putting pencil on here, it's going to take you more time. And also, <clears throat> we can do things on top of matte paint with pencil that we can't do with a on top of pencil. Okay, I'm going to dab that off if I get too much. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do something in the background here or not. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I'm hoarse. This is weather change again for us. And um, I have a problem with getting hoarse when the weather changes or the pollen changes. Now, <clears throat> let's see. I have a lump there and a lump there, so I'm spreading it out. I have to look in the light here. Here, I've got this one I didn't spread out. So, this is going to be the way that I paint the background. For those of you that are new to acrylic painting or new to coloring, if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments section. I appreciate that. I'll get to your your question as soon as I can. And I have to lift it up to see in the light here. Okay, that looks good. Now, some people are faster at the painting than I am, and it's not about speed. I want to do a good job. And... I go a little slow, but then I feel like my end product is meeting my expectations the way I want it to. So I put a little bit of a glob on here, and then I spread it out because I don't want it lumpy, but that keeps me from having to do too many coats um, around these small objects. I usually can get them covered in one, depending on the color of the paint, the pigments, and the type of paint. So see, you will go around small items, uh, objects, like that grass. <laughs> okay? So... That's how I'm going to do the background. Okay, let me go on to something else before I put you on pause. Now, I will put you on pause and do the rest of the sky, and then I'll come back. It'll be finished. Uh, let me back out a little bit, because what I'm going to do needs a wider picture here. Um, what I'm going to do, too, while I'm off camera, I'm going to color this whole, I'm going to paint this whole um, sky in with blue. And then... I'm going to take um, Perfect Purple by Folk Art. It's a matte finish. And I'm going to do a wash on these um, uh, design, I guess you want to call it, on this dinosaur here. <clears throat> and then I will do a wash with the green. So let me do that real quick so you can see that. So wash means that I'm going to dilute this with enough water that I can still see my color book lines and drawing underneath. This one I'm using full strength to cover the background. So that's it. Uh, let me shake this up. <clears throat> and uh, I haven't used this one in a while, so I have to squeeze it out here. This one I'm just going to dilute with water. Oh, boy, is it drying up? This one I'm going to dilute with water. Um, I'm not going to put any flowing medium because 
Oh, I got too much. Okay. I am going to dilute this with water, and I'm going to, let's use my pipette. If you don't have any of these pipettes, they are really cheap, and they are very handy. And I can suck up water and put it right in there. Okay, I want to, I don't know if I've got that uh, too diluted or not here. I have to test it out. I probably put a little bit too much water. Yeah, I did. Well, anyway, I haven't done this in a while, and I'm sort of rusty right now. I'll, I will try it. It's a very dark purple, and I don't want it to be. Okay, here's my test page, as you can see. And I'm going to dip in there, and yeah, see, that'll be translucent enough. Perfect. I guess I didn't get too much water, because that's a dark purple. You want to be able to see your color book lines through it. And I could do this in pencil, but because this dinosaur is, too, is so big, and I want this to be a little bit vivid. Now, if I get too much, I can just dab it like that. In fact, that's what I'm going to do because that came out perfect. Um, it could be diluted a little more even. I can see that. But I'm going to just dab it up. There, this should be purple here. And this... And I'll go on to the, the neck of it later, and the tail. We'll just do the middle part while we're on camera for you. And I have enough for that one. Now what this is, is a base coat, and it's going to show through. So we don't have to color so hard every little tiny detail, and it makes the pencil work better. It gives it a tooth and everything becomes more vibrant. So there's a lot of advantages to doing acrylic washes. Okay, let that dry for a second. So that's how I'm going to be doing the purple. And the green, let me do that for you real quick here. And It's another one that I haven't used in a while, so my paint is a little thick. And I want to, and then we go over all of these base coats, these washes, with our pencil. And let me get another one to here. And let me stir this, this up. So this is a wash, and it's not full strength like the background. I just want to be able to reiterate that because people get mixed up sometimes, and they ask me, oh, wait a second. I uh, didn't get that paint all stirred up in there. There's some particles that aren't stirred up. Okay. Just make sure it's stirred up well. And then let me try that again on my test sheet here. Yeah, so uh, it's translucent. You can see through it. You can see the words through it. Okay. I'm going to turn around here so I can reach this uh, dinosaur. <clears throat> Make sure that I have the right color on my brush and I didn't mix it with them. Yeah, I've still got some paint in there that's not letting, not mixing up with um, the water. So let me do it here. Okay, there we go. Now we can change this green base coat 
We will let it show through to a big degree. But we can also, by the color of our pencil on top, we can change it to an olive green, a dark green, medium green, a light green. We can do a lot with it. We can put brown in it. We can do a lot with it. So I am going to do the base coats here. And give it plenty of tooth. And you're going to see a transformation when you do these washes. Actually, acrylic paint can be used as watercolor to some degree. Um, depends on how you dilute it. So it's very versatile. And it does not bleed through. Now this is a Kirby book, so the paper is very nice here. I don't know on really, I haven't done it on really, really thin paper. But I've heard people who have, and they say that it works also. Now we don't want detail here. You know, like I was going to go around that edge a little better. Now if it's dark and light, that's okay because it's a watercolor look. And we want it that way, so when we do our, ba our, our detailing, I'm sorry, not our base coat, our detailing, that it will look more natural. And this has to dry. I have to finish the head off camera. That takes a little bit longer, and I have to use a smaller brush. And so I'm going to do all of the dinosaur with this base coat. This is a classic, I didn't say what it was, folk art classic green matte paint. Just a regular classic green. So I wanted to do some of this on camera to explain it and demo it for you before we go on to the rest of this picture because these are the elements I do first. Always the background if possible and I always try to do the biggest spaces that are open here. Uh, this takes, if you were to do this dinosaur with pencil, you're going to be here a long time. But you're going to see that he can look just as good if not better and more vibrant with an acrylic base coat. So, I'm going to go and finish this. Oh, I went over the, oh, I didn't want to go over that, but I think it's okay. I don't want to go over areas where I want them purple. Okay, so, that's how I'm going to do the um, this part, the wash, and this part will be full strength paint for the sky. So, I am going to put you on pause. It will only seem like a minute for you, but I will finish this and return. Hang in there. Well, I'm back. And I said I was going to do the background here, blue, and um, put a wash on the dinosaur. So that's what I did. But then I got carried away, and I started putting a wash on these dinosaurs here. And I used the Cottage Rose Folk Art Matte Paint. And it's just the perfect color because I want to do some brown in there. And it'll give me sort of a beigey brown color. And um, so instead of moving on to doing our detail work, I thought there were still elements of this picture that I can do a wash on. And uh, I, would, I started here on the tree branches. Yes, they're small, but we have so many of them. Let's put a wash where we can and on the buildings and on the tree trunks. So that by the time we finish our washes, we won't, I would say, we won't have to use that much pencil because we'll be detailing all of this. So let's try that. I might put a little brown color down here 
also. So, but I want to make the browns and the golds different so that when I do use my pencils, I can adjust the sh color of them. I don't know if that makes sense, but just watch me and we'll go through it. Okay, together. Um, I'm going to use a medium brush here. It's a round brush. I like round brushes the best. Um, what's the size on this? Ooh, it's hard to see. A five or a six? A five, I think. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put this in my little dish here, the plastic dish I use for diluting my paint. Um, let's do the buildings first. And I, I thought about first putting them in, in khaki as a, I want a light base coat. But then, um, I got to looking at this golden sunset. And I thought maybe I would try that. This is totally an experiment on my part. Normally I would go with khaki. But I think I'm going to make this a golden uh, color and then go back with my brown pencils. And we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to try it. If I don't like it, I can always go over it with, with different colors of pencil. Oh, okay, let's get going. I'm going to shake up my paint really well here. And uh, let's see. Okay, hold on. I'm going to get my paint out. <laughs> Acrylic paint in these kind of bottles dries up or starts getting thicker. Okay, I'm going to do that. Golden Sunset. And then I'm going to, where's my pipette? Oh, great. I don't have it here now. Just a second. Let me look. Okay. Who knows? I tell you, it gets misplaced. So let me use my spray bottle. It's just water in it. That's it. And I'll spray a couple squirts in there. And then um, stir it up again. Let's just do as much we can on washes. The more base coats we have. Ooh, I'm getting some purple in this from my dish. Little tiny flakes. Ooh, hopefully it'll go away. It won't show. Ah, I should have ran it under water more. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move my papers here. And that was a test paper to see if I've got it thin enough. I don't think I do. Mm, maybe let's do another squirt of my water. I would rather have it a little bit on the thin side. Yeah, because there's some paint here on the edge that's a glob. Sometimes the acrylic paint doesn't want to dissolve right away, especially if you have thick paint. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Let me let that dry and let me turn my dish around so I can. And we're going to do the wash here on the buildings. You know what? I think I can even make it thinner. Yeah. Okay, I may use my. I'm going to put more water in it. So this is how you're going to make up your. Your wash, you have to experiment. And uh, let me stir this up off camera and try it out. And see where I'm at. Some paints are more opaque than others. And even in acrylic paint, you have translucent colors. Another squirt of water. Okay. Yeah, okay. Some, like I said, some are more opaque than others. And this gold seems to be. And I'll just blot it if it's too much. Or I'll add a little more water as I go. We'll see. I'm only doing these buildings. And I'm doing everything. Because I want, you know... 
light coming through the windows. Does that make sense? And uh, if I have this thin enough, I can use different colors of pencil over it really easily. Well, there's a bush there behind. Oh, well, I went over it with gold, so we'll have to do some greens on it or other colors. Kirby's drawings are very detailed, and I love them. But sometimes I get so involved, I don't see things till I've already painted over it. Okay, um, I'm hoping these come out okay. Um, I have never, you know, I try to remain conservative with my colors, so this time it's a little bit different for me. And uh, we'll see what happens here, folks. You're along for the ride. <laughs> okay. This is a very opaque color. Did I say what it was? It's Golden Sunset by Apple Barrel, and it's a matte finish. I will list these colors below, and uh, that way you'll know which colors I'm using. It's either Apple Barrel or Folk Art that I'll be using here on this. Okay, I'm going to go on the buildings. Well, let's give it a gold color. Let me try that. Um, I don't want to wreck my background. So what I thought of, I should have maybe done my washes first and then my background, but I can always touch it up if I'm careful and don't smear it out there too much because acrylic paint, you can paint over another color with it with a different color, a lighter, darker, doesn't matter. But you have to let it dry thoroughly. Okay, I like that. Oh, I'm not zoomed in, am I? Sorry, folks. But um, I think I'll just zoom in like that for this picture because... It's just a wash, but maybe you do want to see it up closer. I don't know. It's I'm not doing anything, uh, anything unusual. Just spreading out this like a watercolor. You could do watercolor for your base coat here if you want to. Any any type of water medium would work. Also, but I like the acrylic paint because it's giving me more of a tooth on my paper so that my pencils will become more vivid and work. They have something to grab onto to work better. You do have a tooth with watercolor, but not as much. So if you feel more comfortable with watercolor, go ahead with watercolor. But uh, let's get these buildings I know it looks strange right now, and nothing looks real pretty because we are just... Now, there's a sky there that I missed, and up here. I don't want to paint that. Even though I could go over it, I'm going to try to avoid it. Today's Christmas Day, and my husband got to go play golf absolutely free. The golf course is closed. And they let people come off. It's run by our city here. And they let people come and um, just play their heart's content out. So that's what he's doing. And it gives me some time to do a little more on this video that I'm compiling for you. If I don't like those bushes after I put brown on them, I might stick these little tiny bushes. I might stick in other colors. We'll see. Okay, we're just about done here with this 
and we'll move on to the trees. Now, when I put my sky in, there's some telephone lines coming down here from this telephone pole. I can see where they're at. So what I will do is draw those back in with my um, Micron pens. I also have another pen, a Pilot G, Pilot G4, I think it's called, something like that, that I'll use, one of the two. And uh, they're really great for outlining and putting in back in some of the black lines. I know people are taking out the black lines, but sometimes on some pictures, I think you need to put them back in. At least I do. Okay, let me move um, back and let's take a look at this. I know it looks uh, probably ugly yet. But we're getting there. Okay. And we'll have a lot of browns in here. Let me do another brown for the trees. I want those. I have a book under here so that it's not pressing down so flat. Let me mix up. I don't want to get on my wet paint. Let me do it off camera. I'll mix up some um, other color of brown. Let's see. I'm going to go with what they call Traditional Beige by Apple Barrel. It's a matte finish. And um, I thought for, well, I was going to use khaki on something. Oh, down here for the walkway, maybe. Or should I? No. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the lightest color, khaki, for the trees. Because I, I used gold here. I was going to use one of these browns. That's what it was. That's why I have them out. But because I did the gold here, I'm going to use the lightest khaki color. And I'm going to, let me dilute that off camera. You know how I did it. Let me wash out my brush. And uh, And let me get some water in it. I'm stirring it up. And then I'm going to test it out. That one dissolved right away. Okay. I think I have it now. Let me move here hmm, on the table somewhere. Got to arrange myself here, folks. Okay. Hmm. Make sure that I dissolved it all. Well, that's somewhere stirring it with my... Did I try it out again? Because I had more paint on the bottom. That's good. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go with this lighter color because I'm going to be adding darker colors and detailing. Okay. I want to be careful too, though. I don't want to be sloppy. Now I make my trees darker on the edges, so if I don't get too much paint there, that's okay. But I do want some there. Uh, too much dab a do. Oh, uh, what is that? Now well, that's a hidden object, but we're going to paint over it. We don't need the hidden objects. 
I'm real happy about the mythographic books dropping out of the, taking those hidden images out of their new books. I've got a new book or two and I need to work on that. I love the mythographic by Joseph Kattenbang. And uh, I'll just do that branch. It's so little with uh, <clears throat> my pencil. So don't think we have to do all the details here. This is just a rough base coat. Don't get carried away like I do sometimes. I want to paint the whole thing. Oh, let me get my paper in here. I'm going off the edge. <clears throat> and I don't want to get it on the back because I have a picture already colored back there. I want to dab that. Make it lighter. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can do this with this brush or if I'm going to have to get another brush. These are smaller trees here. I thought I would detail it on camera more because I've had some requests for that from people. And I hope this helps them. Okay, there's some branches coming off, but we're going to worry about those with pencil. And I'm going to get a fresh towel here. Mm. Well, I hope my buildings come out like I've envisioned them. You know, a lot of times I experiment off camera with that. This time I haven't. <laughs> I just went with it. And I usually try out my colors. I'll make a copy on an inkjet printer and then try out different colors. Um, but I didn't do that this time. So... We'll see what happens. I guess if it's too golden, I can put more brown in it and hide it. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay. I hope you're having a lovely day today. Remembering what our day is about. The birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's a wonderful holiday. It's my favorite holiday uh, of the year. Thanksgiving's number two and Easter's in there with number two and three. Easter's important too. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you don't celebrate that though, that I just want to say happy holiday to you or Happy Hanukkah, whatever the case is. Um, I saw a Hanukkah coloring book the other day from Creative Haven, but I didn't buy it, and I thought it was really beautiful Jewish art. So I'll have to take a look at that for next year. I missed some blue sky there, too, so I have to go back and touch. I don't want to get those. Um, I don't want to get the leaves brown. Okay. So, while this does take a little time, in the end, we are going to be happy. <laughs> It'll cut down. Let me get a clean paper towel. It will cut down on a lot of pencil work. And yet we're going to have the beauty of our pencils showing even more so. Okay.
my husband went and bought, we, you know, it's just the two of us, so we don't want to have a lot. Um, so, of food, um, you know, and we're not cooking that much for two people. But for our holiday today, we went and bought a ham with the bone in it. And I put it in my slow cooker, crock pot, whatever you want to call it. And I cooked it for several hours. And it has come out just so delicious. So that will be our meal today with some nice um, vegetables. Fresh baby spinach, I think, is what we're going to have. A baked potato. I don't know. Whatever he wants to eat. Maybe some corn with it. We'll see when it comes time for dinner. But we have an easy way to cook. And delicious. And my house smells like roasted ham. So great. Okay. we Let me back out and show you what we just did on this. Okay. So we've got those base coats in. Now, what I would like to do, and I'm not going to do every single little piece here, but um, while I have this beige out of the, like the tree, let me go down here and do a little bit. Um, I can't do everything because there's bushes here, plants. Uh, let me just do that real quick, even though I'm zoomed out. You have to look for the the dirt. <laughs> the dirt. Um, okay, let me come back in. I don't know. That's sort of stupid, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's. I'm just going to give it lightly something here, just to help me see those. See, there's a lot of these little uh, bushes. There's a lot of shading here that Kirby has these uh, marks. I don't know what you call those marks. But um, I'm going to put a little bit in here, too. And then the small stuff, of course, we can just use our pencils. Let me bring my paper out here to the edge. I don't want to smear this paint on the back and wreck my picture on the other side. I bought another copy of Worlds Within Worlds because some of them that I've already colored, I mean, they're okay. I liked them at the time. I don't know why I did them that way. Do you ever do that? You know, you look back on your work and think, oh, shoot, why did I do that? But at the time, that was what was in your mind. And, but there's some of these pictures in here that I already want to color again differently. I think you learn by coloring it the first time. And then the second time, you can really improve your coloring. Anyway, that's my, my thinking, my opinion on that. So I'm looking forward to... I'm working in the original book I have first, though. And then after that, I can color another another book and then compare them. That would be great. Color it at different times and compare them. Okay, let's get this down in here. I'm going to move up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. I don't know. I like painting. I get carried away when I start putting base coats on. I really like to do that. Is that a rock? I think so. It'll have a little color. It may not have everything on it, but that's okay. Yeah. 
If you're going to color along with me or color this at a later time, let me know. I, my video will always be there if you want to follow along. Being it's Christmas, I don't know how many people will be online watching YouTube. But it'll always be there after Christmas. So I thought I'd go ahead and make my video here. Let me see how much time I've put into it already. This can take a lot of time, all the detail here. I'm getting to where it's mostly um, little plants now. Okay, I'm not going to do any more there. I'm going to leave that. Now, one more thing I want to do before we end this video, and uh, let me back out again here. Mm, okay, so we're that far. The more more you can do, the quicker your coloring is going to come together. I'm going to take this lime green by Folk Art. It's a matte finish. And I'm going to do these clumps on the trees. And then I might take a little darker green over here. I might do that off camera. So let's get going and let me put on some of this um, wash. So you can continue with your washes. Let's go and do a little more washing here. Oh, I put way too much paint. I like tube paint better because you don't seem to waste as much. Okay, let me stir it up. I'm going to stir it with the brush in this time. I normally don't. I stir it with a wooden end. But I want to make sure this paint dissolves all of it. Okay, I'm making up my wash, folks. Just bear with me. And I want to wipe off my brush. Let me move some things here so I have more space. Okay, I will come in again for those that watch me on a phone. Okay, and I'm going to, that's my coloring book underneath. Let me put a, I just use computer paper to get the excess paint so it doesn't go on my other page. And I'm going to dip in here. I haven't tried it out. It should be fine. And... Now you think, lime green, that's way too bright. I want that different from this green uh, and the dinosaur. And I want light in my, in my tree branch, my tree leaves. So it'll come out okay. I've even put olive green with this and it works so good to give you a great olive green look. I use a lot of lime green for bushes and <laughs> and leaves and things like that it just works for me and you'll see when we get to the detailing part okay i always tend to have my brush too wet when i start out boy i could paint the side of a building i could dip in there and just slap it on but i gotta be more careful <laughs> I gotta be more careful. So we're gonna wash out as much as we possibly can here. And I'm gonna hold this. Oh, I got too much paint on that. I don't want it to go underneath. And I'm going to dab it. Okay, there we go.
Okay. Let's go and do... I wanted to get all of this done in one video, but... You know, folks, with Kirby being so detailed and this being a double-page spread, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to do two parts for sure. And I really like doing the one part, but uh, it can't be a picture this detailed. <laughs> okay, let's go over here to this side. Let me move my paper. And be careful if you have wet paint there. It'll go on the other side of the sheet if you're not careful. Okay, I need to dab off my brush. Sometimes I use uh, lime green for uh, a background too. I love the brightness of it. Depends on what I'm coloring and the picture I do. I believe I used it in, uh, I don't know, was it Clara Markova book or maybe Hannah Carl's on it. Don't, oops, I got it on there. I don't remember. I don't want to have to touch things up, so I want to be doing this as cautiously as I can. Oops, I missed some more sky. I have to go back and check between the branches that I, and fill in the blue that I missed. Let's just get this ready as much as we can for our detailing. And then when that's where the magic happens, we can see how it comes to life. The whole picture will come to life. And we have some darker green branches that are coming over the top, so I'll do those with the classic green. And uh, it'll all be good. Okay, let's see if we... Let's back out, take a look. I have to keep looking at it from a distance to make sure that we've gotten everything and there are some things we can do. Let's go out a little further. Okay. Well, there's some green, dark green here that I can do, and I'll do that off camera because we've already done so much of it on camera. Uh, I think this is a really good start for us. The rest of this tiny stuff can be all pencil work. So I think I'm going to call this part one. And then come back after I um, finish part one video and post it and do part two. That's what I'll do. So we'll have a two-part video. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the acrylic washes. And leave me a comment if you're going to give it a try or if you use them. And this is part one, so stay tuned for part two. And Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays and Happy Hanukkah to all of you who are supporting my channel and watching it and um, encouraging me every day. Take care and happy coloring.